Spit is an anthropomorphic robotic head that is specialized for face-to-face -face interaction between humans and this robot. So a lot of the sensors, the actuators, the degrees of freedom have all been specialized for sending as well as receiving the social cues that people very naturally expect when talking to someone face to face. Kismet has a very expressive and complicated face. There are a total of 21 motors that have been packed all into Kismet's head and neck system. There are three degrees of freedom that move the neck around so the robot can t twist its head and look around and orient. There are three degrees of freedom in the eyes, so the eyes can look around, like the way people do. There are four degrees of freedom in the robot's lips, so it can curve each edge on the top lip as well as the bottom lip. There are two degrees of freedom in each ear, which allow it to elevate as well as kind of rotate, fold the ears back kind of like a, an animal. There are two degrees of freedom for each eyebrow that allow them to elevate as well as arch inward and outward. And then there's one degree freedom in each eyelid that allows them to open and close so the robot can wink and blink and so forth. As far as sensors are concerned, the robot can perceive people through vision. There are actually four cameras on the robot. There is a camera behind each eyeball that you see that has a long focal length lens, which basically means the robot has a very magnified view of the scene. So for things like looking at a person's face, at high resolution so it can pick out things like eyes and so forth. There's a camera mounted between the eyes as well as in the nose which is a wide field of view camera which gives the robot a, a decent sized periphery so it can sense you know, if somebody's walking in the background and so forth. The two cameras down the middle are also used to get a distance metric so the robot knows if you're standing very close to it or far away from it. There's a microphone that is essentially attached to the robot's auditory system that you wear. It's a lavalier microphone. The reason why we use that instead of the microphones on the robot's uh, own head is that there's a lot of noise in this room and the noise can corrupt the speech signal so it's difficult for the robot to understand what you're saying. But by having a lavalier it's very close to your mouth and we can get a much cleaner signal. The computers are actually on the other side of the wall, you don't even see them. <laughs> and there's a huge rack of computers. There's 15 altogether and they're all networked and running concurrently. There's actually four different operating systems running on these machines. It's kind of a really hodgepodge network. Nine computers alone are used for vision. Vision is very computationally extensive, and even as such, Kismet's visual system is a very simple vision system. Um, one computer is used to process the speech signal coming in, and what we're doing right now is we're looking at the prosody of a person's voice, so the energy and the pitch over time, as opposed to worrying about phonemes. We are getting that information, but we're not using it just yet. Um, there's another computer that's running the voice synthesizer, which allows the robot to actually vocalize. And we've implemented um, some software that allows the robot to change its voice quality to mirror its emotional state, so the robot can actually sound happy, sound sad, sound angry, and so forth. Um, and then, of course, there's four processors that model emotional processes, basic drives, behaviors, um, higher level perceptions, as well as controlling you know, low level motor processes such as the face, the eyes, the neck, and so forth. So it's a pretty complicated system when you put it all together. <laughs> but you know, we're trying to build a creature. We're not trying just to build a robot demo program. We're trying to build a robotic creature, and all of these aspects play a role in creating intelligent behavior.